Hello and welcome to another Python tutorial. So in today's video, we're actually gonna, I think call it like kind of almost like a step back. So I know in a lot of the other videos related to my Python and using Excel, Word, PowerPoint, the whole VBA model, uh, I've been using the Win32COM library an awful lot. And some people have been asking me if I could kind of do a video that focused more just on how to use that library and kind of the functionalities that are available to us behind the scene. So we can kind of think of this video as being the first video in the series where we're gonna explore the Win32COM library. Now, in particular, this video is gonna be focusing more on how we dispatch objects, and then we're gonna discuss early versus late binding. Now, I do have another video that I'm gonna be doing that's gonna be kind of going more into the, I guess, the history of it in a sense, or, or kind of really what the, the intent was behind creating this entire library. But uh, that's kind of for upcoming because that's just taking a bunch of research and I have to kind of read through a lot of documentation in order to get that. But in order to get one video out there, I did want to talk about at least how do we dispatch objects and then how do we use early versus late binding. So the first section we're obviously going to talk about is the dispatching of objects. So most of my videos, it always kind of looks something like this, right? So we import our libraries, right? And so we'll say, hey, uh, import win32com.client. Now in this example, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use an alias. Uh, and so basically what this will allow me to do is now if I type win32, really what I'm referring to is this whole little library right here. And then once we have this imported library, we would dispatch our object or we would go and create our com object that we wanted to work with. Now, in most examples, we would be working with Excel, right? So in most examples, it would look something like this. It would say, okay, win32, we would call the dispatch method, and then we would pass through the, uh, the name of our object that we wanted to create it. But really, what is this actual method that we're using? Well, here, we're using the dispatch method, but then we're actually passing through a very specific piece of information. It's not just any old piece of information. What we're actually passing through is the program ID. So we can consider this one as using the dispatch method, method one using the program ID. Now the program ID is basically an identifier that it's a little bit more reader friendly or human friendly in the sense that if we pass through this program ID, Windows knows what particular application we're talking about. Now, if you saw my video about how to create Python formulas in Excel, when we register our object, one of the pieces of information that we have to provide Windows is the program ID. And what that allows us to do is once we've provided that program ID, if we wanna go and then create that object, what we can do is just pass through the program ID and Windows knows what object we're talking about. However, when we're using the Win32 library, in fact, with some other libraries, uh, there's actually more than one method for creating this object. Now, just for demonstration purposes, let's see what is returned back to us. Uh, what it's telling me is, okay, you've got this Excel object library instance at you know this location. So nothing too fancy at this point, but it's just telling us, hey, there is some information here for us. Now that's using the first type of method. So I'll call this one Excel app one, and then I'll create another variable called Excel app two and it's gonna look almost identical. So it's still gonna be the dispatch method and it's still gonna be taking a string, but in this particular method, we're gonna be passing through something called the CLL, CLS ID. And this is a more unique identifier that is unique to every object in our Windows library. And what this one is gonna be is it's a very long number, but if we pass it through, the Windows will still know what we're talking about, but we're gonna be passing through something that it's a little more unique identifier. Some, so something that uh, you can't change it. So you might have instances where you could technically have different Excel applications. They might be different versions, but the actual CLS ID is going to be unique for each one of those versions. Now, most people don't have the CLS ID memorized. I know I don't. So what I did is I actually got it for me and I'm just gonna leverage this one here for me. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paste that through. And so this would be basically method two, where we're gonna be using the CLS ID. So using, uh, 
the dispatch method, method two, using the CLS ID. And again, just for uh, demonstration purposes, what we'll do is we'll display Excel app one, and then we'll display Excel app two. Now they should look pretty much identical except for this little last piece right here which is saying, hey, there's a different instance at this location. Mm -hmm. Oh, misspelled display. Okay, so they're exactly identical, but again, kind of at this last point, we have two different locations. But they still are both saying they're both an Excel application instance. So that's using the dispatch method in order to basically go and create our object. Now, a lot of people ask me, how do you know where the CLS ID? Uh, actually, in the second part of this video where we talk about early and late binding, uh, if we use early binding, it creates a file, and then inside that file is the CLS ID. And so I'll kind of show you what that looks like. But jumping on to the next one, we'll put a cell below. And in this section, we're gonna talk about early versus late binding. So what is early versus late binding? Well, kind of in a nutshell, what we're talking about is, does Python know anything about the object that I've created? Well, if it doesn't, we're more than likely talking about late binding. So it knows it's an object, but it doesn't know any of the methods or properties that belong to that object. It just knows that it's an object. Whereas with early binding, it does know information about this object. So it does know the methods and properties about this object. And more importantly, it actually knows the type of object that we're working with. So actually up here, I am using early binding. Now, the only reason that by default it chose early binding is that because I've used early binding in the past. So once we use early binding, Python will default to early binding with those objects. So what it's telling me here is that this is an application instance. So it's telling me it's an Excel application object. Now, to demonstrate this a little bit further, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create an instance of the Word app and an instance of the Excel app. But we're gonna use the uh, Word app, with the Word app, we're gonna be using late binding. So what we're gonna say is create an instance of Word using late binding. And so we're gonna create a new variable called Word app. And again, it's gonna be Win32. We're gonna pass through the word dynamic and then we're gonna call the dispatch method. So dynamic means late binding. And then we'll pass through the program ID. And then what we'll do is we basically get back this little object right here where it's saying, hey, it is a word application and it's a com object word application. So not a lot of information about this particular object. It's just telling me it's a com object that represents word, but not necessarily what we're working with. Now on the alternative side, we can create an instance of Excel using early binding. And so here we'll create an Excel app. We'll go into Win32. We'll call the generate cache. And then we'll call ensure dis patch. And then again, it will be the Excel application program ID. And so again, I'll display these two objects side by side. So that way, we can see what we're working with. Did I misspell? Oh, misspelled it. It's CH. Perfect. Okay, so with this one, it tells me it's a com object. With the other one, it's actually telling me it's an application instance. In fact, if we go a little bit deeper and we actually say, hey, display the type of this particular object, this is kind of where it comes in handy. So here, it's just telling me it's this dynamic dispatch object, nothing about it. It's just an object that belongs to the Win32 but that is it, we don't know anything else about it. However, with the Excel app, we actually can tell it is an application object that belongs to this wonderful little thing right up here. And if I remember correctly, that is uh, one of the CLS IDs, or it's one of the IDs that belongs to the Excel application. So that's the important thing. 
This is where early versus late binding can sometimes come in handy because if we have early binding, we can have a little bit more control as to making sure that if we create a function, if we create a function, that we can make sure that the object that is being passed through is the right type of object because now we have a way to verify that particular type of object. So it does come in handy down the road. Now, what about this method up here? What does dispatch do? Well, dispatch is basically saying you're letting Python choose. Python is going to choose the best method in order to uh, create this object. If you've used early binding in the past, it has information about that object stored away. So by default, it will use early binding. If you have never used early binding in the past, it will by default use late binding. Now that also leads me into the next point. How does it know all this information about each object on the new instance? So as we create a new script, how does this know about the Excel application? Uh, it, won't it just delete all that information after we've uh, you know, deleted the script or something like that? Well, this is kind of the kind of the neat part. It actually goes out there and creates a file that contains all this information. And so when we dispatch it, it will go and basically look at that file and get all the information that it stored from the last run. Now, I actually have this file open. Uh, it's right here. Uh, I put a little shortcut in it. Now, usually what it does is it, well, at least from what I was reading in the documentation, it's supposed to put it in the library itself. So the library folder that belongs to uh, Win32Com. Now, for whatever reason, I'm thinking, I'm thinking it might be because I'm using uh, the Jupyter Notebook that it's putting for some reason in my app data, local, temp, generate pi, 3.6, and then it creates these little folders for each of the objects that we uh, uh, use early binding with. And so if you go into one of these, you'll see all the objects that belong to the application instance. And so for example, if you go here to, uh, we'll just do workbooks for example, right? So we'll open it with the notepad just to show everything. Basically it creates this whole file that has all the methods and properties about these particular objects. Now that's kind of the neat thing is you can actually see behind the scenes how these methods are working and what they're expecting. So for example, if we wanted to open a workbook, it tells us all the different types of parameters that are being used for this particular method. And if you keep going down, in some cases you can have a ton of methods, just to say the least. Um, but, and then basically what it's doing is it's assigning some of these uh, integers to different uh, dictionary variables and stuff like that. And, and it's just giving us all this information that we can potentially use down the road. But all this information is now available to us. Now, the other thing that I was gonna tell is that these files actually contain the CLS ID for our particular object. So I believe this is the one that is the CLS ID. I have to jump back because I can never remember it. Uh, da, 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 24500, I think it's at the top if I remember correctly. I saw it somewhere. Oh yeah, yeah, here it is. I think it's this one. Uh, so it's in different locations. You, you will kind of see it all over the place sometimes. I remember I did have to try to, you know, jump around a couple of times to say, hey, is this the one? Is this the one? Um, and then things along that nature. So it's not necessarily clear which one is the true CLS ID because I used this one in the past and for whatever reason that didn't work as either, which I was very surprised because that to me says, well, if you're calling it the CLS ID, I'm very surprised that I can't pass this one through and it's the one that would actually work for me. It was one that was further down or something like that. So it is in the file when you create it, but unfortunately you do have to dig for it uh, for a little bit, unfortunately. But uh, it's a good file to kind of look at a couple times just to see kind of what is expected for certain things and how certain things are being built. I mean, really how I look at this is, this is basically what's going on behind the scenes inside of VBA. And these are all the methods and how they're working and, and, and really what they're doing. Uh, I will have a video where we're going to kind of go in depth in one of these files and just really be able to read it and understand kind of what we're looking at. So, but it's very cool. I think it's very interesting that, you know, this little method is just simply generating all that information for us. But that's the difference. That, that's how Python knows next time you come in there, the information that is related to these different objects. So with that being said, I am going to end the video. 
If you have any questions about what we covered today, so with you know using the dispatch method, early versus late binding, any of that kind of information, please put them down in the comments below and I'll try to get back to you. And I also wanted to give you an update. I am in the process of doing the GitHub stuff. Uh, we're pretty much there. I did all the repository stuff, but uh, I unfortunately, I have to put some more stuff in there and things along that nature. But you will kind of see, uh, in some instances, Jupyter Notebooks. Uh, maybe not a lot in the beginning, just because I have to write some of these. Uh, but at least for the VBA scripts, uh, all that information will be uh, kind of organized, hopefully in an easy to find manner. At least that's my goal. But then you'll have little Jupyter Notebooks that kind of explain you know, what we're talking about and really just what we're using and, and kind of why we're using it and things along that nature. I do want to make this kind of informative for people. There isn't a lot of documentation on this. And so if people can help contribute, I think that's going to help a lot of people down the road. And, you know, I think that's just helpful. And I think we should try to definitely do that if we can. So uh, thanks again for watching, guys. We will see you in the next video.